Today on the channel, we get vicious and we get delicious with Asylum All-Stars Series 1, Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! here and welcome back to the channel for another Asylum All-Stars Series 1 unboxing and review and today on the channel we got Buff Bagwell, we got Scott Norton, we got Vicious and Delicious but for all your All-Star Asylum needs hit up the Asylum Store but for all your other wrestling figure needs make sure you're hitting up Ringside Collectibles use discount code KYLE save yourself 10% gotta get a deal and of course we're gonna do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel we're gonna take a look at the packaging we're gonna talk about it we're gonna unbox it we're gonna talk about it we're going to see where it goes from there. And Vicious Delicious, a great tag team. Of course, part of the NWO, and the NWO had a couple of good tag teams. You might remember the Outsiders, of course. And I always liked that the Outsiders were kind of the main tag team, but they had a second-rung tag team in Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton. A perfect team. You got a good-looking, chiseled, younger guy, and then you got a big, jacked-up powerhouse guy in Scott Norton. Always thought it was a very cool team. Loved their matches with the Steiners. A lot of good matches over the years. Kind of wish the U.S. tag team titles were around. They could have been feuding for the U.S. tag team titles at the time. Of course, the Outsiders could have been going for the main tag team title sets. Is what it is, but Vicious and Delicious, not the most popular tag team of all time, but one that really did work for the moment in time they worked together. Definitely was better than Ice Train and Scott Norton, uh, that's for sure. But definitely a cool tag team, and very cool to get these two in a toy line. As it's been a heck of a long time since we've had a buff Bagwell figure. I think going all the way back to Jack's Deluxe Classic Superstars Series 5 off the top of my head. I believe that was his last figure, and Scott Norton, I don't think has ever had a figure. So very cool to get a first time in the line. Last time in the line? I guess you never do know here, but let's dive into it. Let's go in order. Is he number three? Yep. Buff Bagwell, number three. We're going to start right there. And there he is. Old Buff Daddy. Buff is the stuff. And of course, we already unboxed the Road Warriors on the channel. Check out that video if you did miss that one. But you got the All Star Asylum logo right there. Buff Bagwell down low. A little glamour shot, cartoon shot of Buff Bagwell. It's like he's breaking through the brick wall. An interesting packaging design. I'm still not sure how I totally feel about it. I almost would have rather had this in kind of the WWE Superstar style packaging with the clamshells. The more I look at it, as it feels like a lot of wasted packaging. And we all know real estate is at a premium these days in our collections. Would have been kind of nice for a, a card back, like a thick card back, plastered on the front maybe. I don't know, teach their own how they feel. But this is a little bit of a shelf killer. There's a lot of packaging here for this smaller figure. So something to take note of there. Buff Bagwell on the side, All-Star Asylum, looking good. Good little shot over there of comic art for old Buff Bagwell. Number three in the line, of course, Hawk and Animal, one and two, or two and one, technically. On the back, we get that same poster. It's a cross-sell poster. I like the ingenious of that, mixing it into a poster as the cross-sell. I think that works pretty good. I did mention the Road Warriors unboxing. Would have liked to have seen a little plastic window here because it is a little bit dark in the package, a little bit hard to see there. So to each their own once again. But on the back, it does say the Asylum All-Stars main event, Saturday, August 20th. Not sure the specifics of that. Parsippany, New Jersey at noon. Once again, shout out to Parsippany. Road Warriors versus Vicious and Delicious. I guess a dream match up there. I don't think they ever had a match against each other. I know the Legion of Doom was back for a brief amount of time. I don't think they faced these two, but I feel like the Road Warriors faced off with Scott Norton in Japan at one time. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that did happen. Uh, Earl Hebner, live on pay-per-view. Of course, Earl Hebner is the chase. We'll unbox the two Earl Hebner figures together, so stay tuned for that. No tape on these boxes, so you're never going to truly know if you got a mint on card one. I could have had this, displayed it for 10 years, put it back in the package, sell it on eBay, say never opened, and nobody would be any of the wiser, so you got to watch out for that a little bit. But there he is, old Buff is the stuff. Buff Bagwell looking good here. Looking nice. There it is. See you later. Up over the top. Oh my gosh. Can I straighten it out? No, not really. Gonna give it a little one of those. Run off the screen. That's the way it goes from time to time. 
True professional right here. True professional, as you guys do know. And we're going to get it one last time. See you later off to the side. Now we're going to dive into old Buff Daddy, old Buff Bagwell here. Of course, you got the big old Buff Bagwell top hat. When I first open this and see this here, kind of reminds me of Papa Shango for a little bit with the hat on and kind of the big jacket there. Maybe they're going to release a Papa Shango in the future. You never do know. The big top hat here does say Buff on it. Of course, a calling card for Buff Bagwell. And then we get down to Buff himself. Now he's got black sunglasses on. The sunglasses are not removable. I do not hate that. I guess I go either way. They could be removable or not. This is fine for me. I like that they're sculpted in there. It's not a bad look if you ask me there. All black hair there on Buff Bagwell. Very jet black hair. I wonder how tight this hat is. Actually, it's not super tight, but it does stay. But if you turn him upside down, oh, take that back. A little tighter than I thought it is. So I like that. It's about perfect fit right there. Not falling off, but not super tight, but not falling off tight. So that's a good look for that one. And then you do get Buff's shirt here. I guess it's a big kind of overcoat going on. Truly not a cape, I will tell you that much. But a nice overcoat going here. Uh, very cool looking. You got the red, white, and black looking very nice. A good feel here, a good feel to the shirt. Feels very good quality here. Thankful to report, we got staining. That's the first thing I was going to go my mind to. I see no staining on this one. So shout out to the Asylum team. As we know, staining is a huge issue. Going to Zombie Sailor, going to AEW, going to Mattel. Uh, even Power Town with their very tight, hard plastic staining some of the figures. As of right now, I can report no staining on this figure. So that is very, very cool there. I'm here for that all day long with the Asylum figures. Uh, but it looks like Buff Bagwell... No doubt about it. Somebody hands me this head. I know who this is. All cut up, of course, like a Buff Bagwell would be. And then you got Buff on his uh, belt there. And then you got a little bit of that brick wall kind of in the pants. Now, we're getting a lot of reuse out of this line. We can see it already. Same bodies for everybody, it seems. Two gripping hands going on. A little paint on the wrist tape here. A little point of difference. But you got the same kind of legs, same kind of everything going on. So getting the most out of your molds across the board. We're used to it, but we need some new molds in the future. Hopefully, we do get that in the future articulation arms do go all the way around you get a side to side bend to the elbow no up and down just side to side mentioned it we got the gripping hands here head back forth side to side not removable not plug and play like other lines uh, we do get a decent split for buff we'll call it decent we do get legs the legs do not go up a whole lot just a little bit in the front so it's like he's kicking somebody in the shins is what it reminds me of you do get the legs a little bit of beat in it, a little bit of a knee bend not super super deep in the knee bend but you do get a little there you do get a boot cut looking good and that's really it for articulation once again so not a ton of articulation on these guys as i did say and of course he does fit on a ringside collectible mattel stand for uh, so i'm here for that all day long looking good i'm gonna pop that hat back on and buff is the stuff truly once again not my favorite performer of all time i remember as a little kid him being the handsome stranger that's how far back i go with old marcus alexander bagwell uh, but it is looking good for what it's trying to get i think it gets the job done it definitely looks like uh, of course buff bagwell right there but now we turn attention to a, a guy that i absolutely love i love the big dudes of course scott norton arm wrestler a uh, big lumberjack like guy of course wrestled in the awa i believe uh, towards the tail end i think it basically was made a huge name for himself over in japan as we know and then of course into wcw a uh, big big time superstar old scott norton and very happy to get a scott norton figure after all these years i love those big barrel chested wrestlers back in the day give me all the barrel chested wrestlers uh, but same packaging design, of course, as Buff Bagwell, as you can imagine. Scott Norton on the side over here. He is number four. Shout out to number four. And then the same background we saw earlier. Unfortunately for me, my uh, postman doesn't like me very much, as I do got a big old tear here. Part of my box was totally just dinged in. This was the guy, the fallen soldier, was Scott Norton. It is what it is. I, uh, If I was mint on car guy, I would not be too happy with this. I'd probably say, hey, could I get a replacement, something like that. But I'm opening these up, so I'm the perfect guy to get a damaged card for. So I'll take one for the team. Taking one for the team out there. Uh, we're going to open him up. Once again, same style opening, all that kind of fun stuff. Scott Norton, see you later. Goodbye. Plastic prison. A little foggy in that first plastic. Would have liked a clearer plastic. I think it would help seeing the figure in there, as well as a little uh, light window at the top would be nice we're gonna get it off there we're gonna get off there see you later double see you laters now we got him old scott flash norton looking good looking different 
Now, this is very Remco light to me, this uh, vest he's got over the top. It kind of feels like a piece of faux leather. I'm sure it's not real leather. It was just kind of cut to fit on him and just kind of slapped on. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect vest, but something in its simplicity there kind of makes you feel back to the Remco days in a lot of ways. So make note of that. It's not the super, super great thing, but it does look pretty good. We got that same kind of brick wall breaking through. We did see that on Buff Bagwell. We do see that on the legs down here as well. Same body, same arms, and this is where things kind of go south because Scott Norton, a very big jacked up dude, he should be a lot bigger than Buff Bagwell. So scaling a little bit all over the place as we're seeing right here today. Uh, articulation can be identical between these two. It looks like they're identical across the board as you do got the black wrist tape on this one, same hands. Uh, of course, the bodies are going to be the same, but the legs looking a little different, but they are the same. He just has the shorts on instead of the tights, but it looks a little bit strange. Uh, and I'm sure Scott Norton wore it this way, but the socks are very, very high up here, especially against the white boots. Then you got the shorts here and then a little bit of skin in the middle. It just looks a little weird. It looks like two big flaps of skin for the knees, uh, but not bad. I mean, it is what it is. I, I think... Uh, I think, or I should say, I know right off the bat, somebody hands me this headset. Who is this? He's a wrestler. I don't think I could guess Scott Norton. And Scott Norton, I know Scott Norton if I saw a picture of him, but as far as action figure form, I don't know if a lot of people would say, oh, that's a Scott Norton hit all day long. And I think people would say the same thing if it was a Mattel Elite or a Jazzwares Unrivaled or whatever of Scott Norton. But he does, for instance, have a glorious mullet. So we're all in from the mullet right there. Big old beard going on. And then he does got some uh, very fashionable black glasses there. He almost looks like, was it Mike or Bob Golick? Which one was in Saved by the Bell, the college years? Oh, the college years, appointment TV on NBC, Saved by the Bell, finally hitting the big time. I was so excited as like a 12-year-old kid. I'm like, wait a minute, Saved by the Bell is going to be on at night and they're going to college. Sign me up all day long and twice on Sunday, and I did. I never missed an episode. Even when they moved it around from like Sunday night to Monday night to Tuesdays, I was finding it. I was looking. I was getting the paper that day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, Saved by the Bell, College Years is on. I'm all in. I got to see what Slater's up to. Got to see what's going on there. And uh, you know how that went. It fizzled out. Didn't last, unfortunately. But I like that Bob Golick. I think it was Bob. Or was it Mike? Bob, Mike, both jewels, both great human beings. They were both in that show, and I was all in on it. All in on it all day long. Uh, but he does kind of have that look to him. Long way to get there, I know. But I do like the looks of this figure for what it is. I just wish he was a little bit bigger, as he should be. These two are not in scale with each other the way we want it to be. But it is what it is. Got to get the most out of your molds, and we see that here with Old Vicious. And, of course, Delicious as well. Compare it to, though, we can finally have the showdown in Persephone is what we can have. We can have them square off against the old Road Warriors right here if we need to. Just looks a bit strange because Buff should be a lot smaller than these guys, as we do know. And then, of course, grabbing some other ones. We'll call this the Bell to Bell collection from ringside. And, of course, WWE Superstars line. We know all about that one. You can kind of see the height differences and scale differences between all these guys right here so there it is a little bit of asylum all-star series one vicious and delicious not as fun for me not as iconic for me though and it was never going to be as the legion of doom the road warriors of course in this instance all in on these two these two are good though two guys that really don't ever get figures scott norton and a guy that's got very few in uh, buff bagwell so we're here for that an interesting one you got to make your decision and speaking of decisions what is your decision you picking these two up let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Of course, you made it this far. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. We got videos every single day and then some. We got even more content for you on the Patreon. Of course, Patreon, your best way to support the channel. But you do get bonus content like you wouldn't believe over there, including early access to videos. So check out the old Patreon and support the channel. You can also support the channel at ProSNTs.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Pick up a t-shirt. And don't forget social media. Sir Paul 64 on the X the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads and on Instagram. So for a little vicious and delicious, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.